What is going on, traders? So you guys always ask me to recap trades. You ask me specifically what strategies do I use? How do I enter trades? How do I exit trades? Do I use indicators? How do my charts look? What do I trade, etc.? So in this video, I wanted to recap a trade that I posted also on social media, on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me there for daily trading finance content, by the way, it's worth the follow. But it was an SPX put trade. And the important takeaway, a few key important takeaways from this is that one, this is a small account friendly trading style. Uh, I don't advocate people who have never traded SPX to trade SPX. I do think that you should get your technical analysis up to snuff a bit. And this will be described entirely in this video. What TA tactics do I use? What strategies do I use, et cetera? What strike price did I pick? How much did I pay for it? But eventually this trade ended up going 262%. So we bought the put for $2.90, ended up selling it for $10.50. So I go through exactly how I came up with the trade, how I entered, how I exited, and where my stop limit was so that you can follow it and hopefully uh, you know, get your trading, especially if you're a beginner, get your trading up to up to snuffs so you can be well on your way to taking these trades yourself. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, back at the desk. So let's jump through the trade. First of all, here was the trade here. I called it out in the Traveling Trader Academy. I said buying the 4070 put, which was an SPX zero DTE, zero DTE for those that are uh, not yet informed means zero days to expiration. We bought it for $2.90. And I said, we'll close if SPX closes above 408350. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, you know that specifically with options trades, and this is something that we teach in the masterminds as well, specifically with options trades, I don't set a stop limit on the option, especially if we're trading zero DTE. You guys that have played with zero DTE a little bit know how violent they can be. And if you set a stop limit based on the amount gained or lost on zero DTE, you are more likely to get stopped out on, on smaller moves because they are erratic because they expire that same day. That's what zero DTE means, zero days to expiration, that I set a stop limit based on the chart itself. Now, this means that you will likely have to take uh, and a dollar amount or a number of contracts that you are comfortable losing because these can easily, if you're wrong on the trade, unlike futures. And I did a whole comparison of how to tr how the how it's the the trades differ between SPX zero DTE, for instance, and trading S and P five hundred futures. I did a whole video on how different those trades are, how different the profit profiles look, which one makes you more money, which one is less risky, which one requires more collateral. Check that video out here. But you know, unlike futures, I have to set a stop limit uh, for the option based on what's going on in in the chart. And so, you know, it's 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 uh, when you're dealing with SPX zero DTE options, you're not dealing with something that has fair value or face value pricing. So if we got above this, and don't worry, I'm going to explain just a minute how I got this level. But if we got above this, I would close out the trade. So let's go to the chart. And by the way, these ended up running, and I'm going to get through this uh, towards the end of the trade. But uh, you know, I assume that you guys want to see this now. These ended up going, or we closed it out at ten dollars and fifty cents. Those were the runners. This actually ended up going from two dollars and ninety cents all the way to about eighteen or nineteen dollars by the end of the day. So we closed it out early, even though it was two hundred and sixty-two percent. Let's go to the chart. So here is where the trade was signaled, and here's the reason that I entered the trade. If we, if I remove this line here. You guys know, and again, I've been on these in, in my masterminds, what makes an A plus setup for me? I actually have a whole Word document on this. Feel free to screenshot this, print it out, use it for your trading. But what, what makes an A plus setup for me? Identifying liquidity. Uh, is it a, and again, I'm gonna go through each of these. Is it a trending day or a range bound day? Uh, what is the daily bias? Uh, and then market structure shift. This is very important, right? This is after identifying liquidity, market bias is the next thing. And then a retracement after the market structure shift into a point of interest. Now, I don't care what you use here. Fibonacci, supplier demand, uh, key levels, fair value gap, moving averages, depending on which methodology you follow, uh, you can use a variety of things here. Now, I will show you how I derive confluence from some of these things. If you have multiple things uh, telling you the same thing, even better. Uh, and then RR has to be two to one or better. So in this case, 
Again, with SPX options, it's a bit different. Now, for small accounts, SPX options are actually, in my view, better than futures if you are looking for uh, maximizing profitability. Futures require a lot of collateral. For one S&P 500 futures contract, you are talking about right now about $14,000 of collateral. For one micro S&P 500 futures contract, you're talking about $1,400 worth of collateral. And for the, the micro futures, while it's good practice, you're not going to maximize profitability. So again, refer back to that video I was talking about. So here we go. We took liquidity here, and uh, this is something that we cover in the masterminds uh, time and time again. We took liquidity here. Now, how do I identify liquidity uh, in really broad terms and in, in simplistic terms and for the sake of brevity for this video? You want to identify a key high or a, a key number, a, a number of key highs, right? So we have one here, uh, which almost coincides with with the one here. So you know this is a potential area of liquidity. And once you see candles above that, especially with wicks, and obviously this is going to depend on the time frame you're looking at. Uh, so here's like the one minute and here's the five minute and you know how to know which time frame to use. This is one of the key things that we discuss in our in our Zoom masterminds as well. But in short, you want to use whichever time frame helps you tell the story. There isn't a magic time frame. When I'm taking trades, day trades, I'm generally looking at the five minute, three minute, two minute and one minute. OK, so in this case, we have our low here, right? Uh, our, our interim low or swing low from this move up we grab liquidity and if you guys follow uh the the videos you know that every single day is just a series of liquidity grabs so you have a liquidity grab here now it's time to grab liquidity here rinse and repeat this happens two three times a day right and then obviously you do have uh the chop as well but in general uh, every single day there's a series of liquidity grabs so we grab liquidity i'm like okay now I am waiting. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting to see if this continues up, right? Because we can easily grab liquidity, keep going and grab more liquidity at these levels. Uh, what's to say that we don't? There isn't any rule that says that we don't. So you have to wait like a hunter. So we're waiting. And now I'm I see the, the, the move start to come down. And I'm like, oh, okay. So this might be it. This might be the, the high of the day. This might be where we grab liquidity and we are now looking to move down. Now, obviously, I don't front run this like a jackass just because I see the first red candle. Uh, I'm waiting for confirmation. What is that confirmation after uh, liquidity? Market structure shift. So I'm waiting to see if we break market structure. Again, for those new to market structure, in short, uh, on the way up, we have this higher low here. This is the most recent swing low. We want to break below that. So we broke below that. We broke that market structure. And you do have VWAP here as well, which is something that I typically have on the chart just for reference because the price does get attracted to that level when it's near there. It doesn't mean that it's going to use it as a prime support or prime resistance. It is just a interim magnetic level, right? So we're hugged up here at VWAP. We, we broke below market structure. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a retracement into a point of interest. How do I get that point of interest? Well, there is a, uh, I guess, a discipline online, right, created by a trader named Inner Circle Trader. And he discusses something called fair value gaps. There have been other traders who have similar uh, you know, I guess similar methodologies. I'm not saying one got it from the other, but there are other similar methodologies uh, regarding breakaway gaps or breakout gaps or uh, imbalances or whatever. But in this methodology, this is called a fair value gap. It's a three candle pattern. You take it for measuring on the way down, you take the bottom of the first candle, the top, including the wick of the third candle, and in the middle is where your imbalance is. Now, Again, I also like to corroborate this with Confluence. So I take the top from here on my Fibonacci tool and I go to the swing bottom after we broke uh, this market structure shift, come back up to retrace it, and now we have the important 0.5 level, right? So anything in this area that is within the fair value gap and or this Fibonacci uh, between the 0.5 and the golden pocket, which is the 0.618 or 0.65 level, right? I'm going to take a trade from here. And this was the impetus 
for uh for this trade. Now let me just delete the Fibonacci real quick. And I said if we get above 4083.50 or somewhere around there, right? Because this was above this imbalance. If we get above there, then I'm going to consider this invalidated. Otherwise, I will buy the 4070 put. Now, right here, the, the price of the S&P 500 is around 40.79. So 40.70 is not that far out of the money. And this was already around 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So I still had quite, I still had three and a half hours for this to play out. Now, the closer that I am to the end of the day, the more at the money or in the money I will want to be with SPX zero DTE options because with zero days to expiration, by the end of the day, anything that's out of the money will expire at exactly zero dollars. That's why they move quick and that's why they are risky. And I just want you guys to know, I keep referencing the Zoom masterminds. We are doing a free one. This is a free mastermind. If you're watching this before April 30th, we are doing it on Sunday, April 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. This will be open to the public. Check the link in the description. Also, the link in the probably in the pinned comments, right? This will be a free mastermind. We go over different topics every time, uh, but we cover a Q&A as well where I try to answer every single question. In this mastermind, we're gonna go over how to identify which direction the market is going intraday for your day trades. We're gonna talk about my favorite strategies to go into what I'm describing here in detail. Uh, vital mental tips that helped me in the last 20 years because I always get asked about trading psychology. And then, one, uh, oddly enough, one of the most common questions I'm getting now is how to invest in treasuries for guaranteed profits and how to construct a bond ladder because bond rates and bond yields are the highest that they've been in at least 20 years. And then obviously a Q&A. So you definitely want to join this absolutely free. Click the link in the description. Make sure you join. Do not miss out because we don't do this often. We do maybe a couple of these a year where we open them up to the public. So Come see what all the rage is about, and I'll see you guys there. All right, let's get back to the trade. So now that that we've entered the put here, right, uh, the 4070 put, now I could have gone, again, closer to the money or maybe pick 4075, but it's a trade-off between the cost of the option and how much time I have left. And since I had you know, almost four hours left from this point until market close, I felt uh, comfortable and confident up until this point. Um, if we were range-bound, right, so if we traded like this for a while uh and it got close to to say 11 a.m pacific time which is 2 p.m uh eastern time then i might have started then i might have actually cut the trade and if i wanted to re-enter would enter with something that's already in the money okay so we rejected here uh and you know i i typically consider this still valid until at least 50 percent of it is filled and we didn't get to that 50% mark. So in my view, we can continue to reject off this level. We rejected off this level again. And now I'm watching this like a hawk. This isn't a set it or forget it type of strategy, right? What am I watching for? I'm looking throughout the, the entire trade. I'm monitoring each candle to make sure that it is not invalidated. And what makes it invalidated? If we break above a previous imbalance or say change market structure, uh, back to bullish, then this will be invalidated. So we rejected off here, kept falling. And now again, you can continue, you can use a uh, combination of uh, gaps as well as, as Fibonacci, but you can see that we had a gap here. We reject a, a very tiny gap here. We rejected off it once again. And now we see another gap here. Now we did get a close above it. So how do I know that the trade is still valid? Well, as I said before, this is when we start switching to different time frames because I need to tell the story. I will look at the three minute. Is there a valid three minute gap or is it invalidated? Uh, I will look at a, a two minute. Is there a valid two minute gap or uh, or, or is it invalidated? Same as the, as the one minute. And remember, we are still here. Now it is much clearer on the one minute, but you have a block of candles here or a block of orders here. Now this isn't a traditional order block uh, per se in the, I guess the, the inner circle trader methodology or the ICT methodology, but 
If you're just a supply and demand trader or you're used to drawing levels, you can easily recognize that, hey, this might be a resistance level. So for me, as long as we don't break above this, and again, this is why I'm very, I'm a very versatile trader. I use a combination of things that have worked for me over the years, and I have already proven profitability to myself day in and day out. So I'm confident in my skill set using Fibonacci, supply and demand, key levels, uh, fair value gaps, any combination of things that allow me to validate or invalidate a trade. And in this case, we're still at, at this key level here. And we reject it once again. And then obviously we have another fair value gap here between these uh, three candles and we reject it off there cleanly. And then boom, we started rocketing down, okay? And this is what you wanna see as a put holder, uh, especially SPX zero DTE. Uh, and again, this is small account friendly because they are rather cheap, but I wouldn't trade them if your technical analysis is not up to snuff. I would still paper trade. Now, why did I exit the trade when I did, even though this kept running? Well, I will show you. And by the way, you cannot, absolutely cannot beat yourself up for taking profits early, okay? This is why I exited the trade because the way that the day was going, it was so bullish during the day that when we hit this, uh, demand zone here, right? Basically the low of the day. I was like, we could see a violent bounce up. And at this point, by the way, I had started scaling out. It's not like I bought a full position and then just maintained it all the way. I started taking profits like at this consolidation level because SPX zero DTE options tend to lose a lot of value during consolidation period. So I start scaling out. Uh, but once we hit here and we were up 262%, I was okay taking profit. Now we we did keep falling, and if I was to hold, uh, you know, at least one runner, I could have, I could have, because if we are drawing, if we are going by the same methodology that I just taught you, if we're drawing imbalances. Nothing was invalidated, right? I could have stayed in the trade. As a matter of fact, actually, if I'm being honest, uh, now that I now that I'm looking back, it was this right here. When I saw this, this is when I finally said. Uh, that's it. I'm 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 exiting because this actually could have invalidated because this, to me, you know, if, if you look on the the lower time frames, the three minute and lower, uh, it did actually start closing above some pretty key levels, right? And so for me, once I started seeing that there was a potential for that put to lose a lot of money if we did see an impulsive, uh, if we did see an impulsive move up from here like this, that put would have just been obliterated. And all the time that I spent watching this would be all for naught. And I'm damn sure not giving any money back to the market. I'd much rather close it out early uh, for, for big profits. So as I said, we ended up closing those runners from $2.90 to $10.50. Current positions that we have open were up 12% on an Apple call credit spread. Although after hours when I'm recording this, the market does uh, look a little bullish due to meta earnings. So we'll see if this actually ends up back to break even. Uh, we closed out our uh, two-year futures, which if you guys are fans of this channel, you hear me talk about all the time, closed out the, the two-year futures uh, op, uh, futures contract, which was up 850 per contract. I have one runner left and then up 30% on VIX calls. I took half there. Those calls ended up dropping to, I think they're up now only 15%, but I did take 50% profit at 30. And we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow and going forward. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed these recaps. Please leave a thumbs up below. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you enjoyed about it. If you have any questions, I try to get back to you guys. I try to answer every single question. Uh, unless it's derogatory or whatever, but we don't get a lot of those, thankfully. So leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, if you have a question, ask me. I will try to answer it to the best of my abilities. But you know, you guys spoke loud and clear. You said that you wanted the trading content as well as the finance and news content on the same channel. So that's what we're doing. So hopefully those of you who are trading focused find this helpful. Uh, and if you guys want to join the Academy, click that link in the description, apply to join to the Academy. And if you are approved, you will know immediately, pretty short, pretty shortly thereafter, you will know if you are approved or not and sign up to that free Zoom mastermind webinar that we have coming up on April 30th. If you are watching this before April 30th, 
If you're watching this after April 30th, then watch out for the next one, which we might do, I don't know, sometime around Thanksgiving or something. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there traders. Peace.